Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode. In today's episode I'll be showing you how to choose the correct motor settings on your Xeon Crane 3 gimbal. It's important that your motors run at the correct settings uh, in order to make sure that the size and the weight of the camera that you have on the gimbal operates properly. You will not get the proper stabilization if you have the wrong size camera or the wrong weight of camera set to the wrong motor size on your gimbal. You'll get shaky footage and worst of all you'll get this warp sense uh, and also the camera will not be going in the direction that you're pointing the gimbal in if you're in a follow mode. So firstly to show you how the setup works, it's very very simple. Right here at the back of your gimbal you have your round wheel which if you press it once down you get your motor settings, wheel settings, joystick settings which you can all set separately but for today we're working with the motor settings. Now on the motor setting as soon as you see the motor setting you'll press to the right on the wheel and you'll see that my gimbal is set to high. The reason I've got it on high is because if you look at my gimbal you'll see that I have the Canon of uh, the uh, Nikon D750 with the Tamron 74 to 70 lens on top of the gimbal, which is a very heavy camera setup. The 750 in combination with the 2470 is quite a heavy setup on this gimbal. So I've got mine on high, and to have a surefire way to know you've got the correct motor setting, you will just be pushing down on your camera's lens, the, the, the front portion of your camera's lens, and if you push down, you'll find that it gives you some resistance. Now, if I are to, if I am to set this uh, at a lower setting or a medium setting, then as soon as I put some pressure here on the front of the, the camera, you'll see that it becomes a little bit more loose. So just to show you how that works, I am going to change mine from the high setting to a low setting. And to do that, you will turn the wheel left or right until you get to a different setting. When I get to the low setting, I will press the wheel to the right. And once I've done that, it tells you waiting and then the Nike mark to show that's the correct setting that you've chosen. So once that is done, I'm putting the gimbal in the correct state that it's supposed to be. And then I'm putting some tiny bit of pressure and look what happens. As soon as the motor is set too low, your camera will flop forward and it will not be giving you the stabilization that you need once you start walking around with your gimbal. Now if you've changed that setting to, for instance, um, the low set, uh, the medium setting, then we will turn the wheel again until we get to the medium setting. We'll push to the right to select the medium setting. Once that is selected, you'll see that the camera is still telling me that the setting is not correct because it's very floppy forward and backward because the camera is too heavy for a medium motor setting. So for this heavy bulky setup of mine, there is no other way than to choose the high setting on the motor. The motors do work a little bit longer and a little bit harder to make sure that your, your gimbal is giving you the stabilization that you need, but you can be sure that you will get stabilization. It is also important that sometimes when you change these settings, your motor settings especially, from high to medium or from medium to low or whichever way, um, to reset or restart your gimbal because sometimes you will change a setting and the, the gimbal will register it, but it won't necessarily move to that setting before it's been restarted. So for that sake, I would always switch off my gimbal immediately after I have changed a setting and then just switch it back on again. And once it is back on, it will register that setting that I've just changed and my camera would be stabilized. Still, we are now in the medium setting. So just to show you again, the medium setting is a bit stiffer, but not really, really stiff. So you can see it's still going forward a little bit. If I just apply a little bit of pressure, it's going forward, but it's not floppy now because I've already done the restart to register the medium setting. And now if I go back 
to my high setting. It tells me now that the setting has been reset. However, we don't trust it because we don't, we're not sure if it has registered in the gimbal. So once I restart now, you'll see my gimbal will jump into place. Once it's jumped into place and I put a little bit of pressure, you can see now it's not that floppy. It needs more pressure to bend down the nose of the camera. And that is how you know that you have the perfect setup on your gimbal's motors to get the perfect stabilization. I really hope this video has helped you a lot and if it has please like and give me a subscribe if you don't mind. Uh, this channel has just hit 500 subscribers and I'm really really happy about that. I cannot be making these videos without you because I am making these videos for you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.